Welcome to the Trading Lounge and the Dayhead Report. And here we're looking at the uh, at the US 30 on the daily chart. And uh, as you know, we've just been working across this level here and uh, now we're pushing off through here. Um, if we take a look at this on a smaller chart here, we can see that um, uh, our wave count here. So um, look, as, as you know, we've just been sort of counting the little two hour chart here, counting up for wave one, back for wave two. Uh, up for wave one and back for two here. So we're looking at wave three up here. So at 4,300, if you're trading this market here, expect a corrective pattern across here and then a push higher from here. Um, but this is still just the uh, third wave uh, to the upside through here. Uh, the 144 is um, it's probably the only number where GAN and and, uh, and Fibonacci or Elliott uh, meet. And uh, as you know, we use the number 72 a lot, which is obviously part of the half of 144, which is part of the nine series of numbers as well. A bit more complicated there. but um, So we should, it's just a sort of a target point up, up that way. The S&P 500, um, we'll just break this down a bit further. Okay, just breaking this down a bit further on the US 30 here. Uh, you can see here that... Um, uh, you know, yesterday we were just sort of looking, counting this up here. We've got wave one and wave two. So we've got wave one here, wave two here, and you can see that this is still uh, moving uh, to the upside here. And uh, if we were going to count this, we could count this here as, it's probably, it's easy to count this as in, in terms of the cash market, the, um, the Dow Jones cash However, um, this is the market that you actually trade, so we really need to navigate through this one. But basically up for one and back for two, and then up for three and four, and then the fifth wave here looks like it's having an extension in, so the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five up here for the top of wave three here. Then there'll be the wave four, then the wave five up through here, which will be part of this wave, uh, larger wave three here. And... Um, then a wave four and a wave five. So there's still plenty of upside, that's the main point. And we've been tracking the S&P 500 more so. Uh, and this is it here on the four hour chart here. And uh, yeah, this is a sort of bigger picture. So we've got um, wave larger wave two here, but then we've got wave one, little ABC for wave, ABC for wave two here, then the up for one and back for two. And yesterday we are looking for this to push up in a third wave, a third of a third. And it's really doing that quite nicely now. And um, um, yeah, so the, the target here would be the midpoint, uh, the 1550, um, which is also the 61 point, the, the, the 161.8 of, uh, of wave one here too, in terms of extensions as a, as a target. But, you know, we know our numbers and, you know, you, you, you drag the psychology of the, the, uh, of the price into the, into the equation. Um, so, um, yeah. So uh, just on a smaller picture here, uh, so, so you can expect a little uh, a little pattern across the um, the the uh, fifteen forty here, but uh, still continuing to to push up to to the upside, so that we can move we can move these figures up here now further. We just had these here from yesterday. So uh, yeah, so that's that's all good, and that will be that target uh, coming up through to here. So of course the uh, European markets are the same as well. Uh, we've got the DAX here, so the DAX would be heading up for one, back for two, up for one, back for two, the third wave up. So up into the above the 8,000 here for the DAX. The same with the FTSE as well. The FTSE, as you know, we've been long in the FTSE for quite some time now, and uh, the 6,500 would be the target through here as well. Um, if you go back in history, you can have a look at the uh, 6,500 there as a medium level, uh, as resistance there. So look, it can just push straight through it really, but uh, eventually it will have it will come back and spend time here as well. Um, and the Australian market as well. Uh, so we've had this um, uh, this this bounce off the uh, of the five thousand through here, and counting five waves up through here would be up for one here, back for two here. Nice strong third wave through here. There will also be five wave structure in here as well. Uh, the pullback into group two here, and then the move above it. So we've got basically the one, the two, the three, the four, and looking for the fifth wave here and in the fifth wave there's going to be five waves as well so the one the two there'll be five waves in the third wave so there'll be something like the one the two the three the four and the five then there'll be a fourth and a fifth further up here um, group one normally holds the uh, price 
uh, in here, so 10, 20, 10, 20 and 30. It's just that there's there's orders, you know, they're the logical places for orders to sit, really. So they're, they're just points of uh, of supply or resistance, and they should nail that, um, that high there. And then we should see some type of correction across the uh, 5 1 here. The uh, ASX 200 can have very shallow corrections uh, and and continue to push high so be mindful if we get support on 5130 that's sitting you know nice support on there then straight away look to the midpoint the 5150 uh, from there but group one normally uh, traps the um, the market and creates a trading range and the trading range the correct the balance line will be the 5100 the group two here will be the support and group one here will um, be the resistance. So um, it's just nice to work from a from a corrective point because trends are engineered from the corrections, and um, and that's where you need to be, you know, moving in from, you know, uh, yeah. So look, let's have a look at the uh, at the commodities. Okay, starting with uh, copper uh, here, the um, this this uh, we're looking for wave four down to uh, wave five here. Um, of wave three here, um, I was thinking that um, this this moved this this move from four to five here should be in five waves. And what we can see so far is we can see this is in three waves here. Um, so we'd figured this would be like a little wave four here, um, as such, and then a little wave five down through to here. I mean, um, but this wave four is just getting a little bit sort of big in comparison for little wave two here, and counting this down for one, two, three four and five through here it's just you know the size of it it doesn't have the right look and feel about it so we may have to put that into here as such and then look for uh wave uh four here um go here wave wave four here which will pull back to the wave four of one lesser degree if that's going to be the case now there's been strong retail figures coming out of uh well australia and and uh and the us as well uh so they've pushed the markets up and of course uh, strong retail is strong products and that's good for china and that's good for us and uh and also metals as well so we may see this rally go but we may be in the fourth wave rally back to this stage uh here so um we'll 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 sort of confirm Firm that once we get support on top of group one here group one would be 51 52 and 53 so support on 53 and that's likely because um it does appear like a little corrective pattern back through here if i just we'll just have a bit of a look at this so yeah so this this um we can we can use this as an a and a b and a C wave coming up through here, um, and that would have wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and wave five in through here. Um, so, but look, wave um, the support on on three, five, three on top of group one straight away tells me that there is you know support in this market and, and it will be going higher. So we we need to be mindful of that. Um, also at this stage two, we can see that this is in three waves here. So that's corrective. So that means that that new high is gonna be pushing out from there. So it might be a time to move back into the material sector, at least for the short term anyway. Um, so let me just have a look at the US dollar here while we're here. Uh, okay, so the US dollar, we, we're sort of, well, sort of hoping that it would, um, you know, retest back into uh, 82 here, which, which it has done. Um, this move down through here is in nice three waves, as you can see. Um, this move up through here hasn't really sort of pushed pushed up through here it, it has taken the low of that out there but you need to allow a little bit of overlapping when you're dealing with uh, leverage products uh, with Elliott and especially out of the three rules in Elliott the wave four here breaking into the price territory wave one is the most common to be broken in leverage products um, so we could be looking at a, um, uh, a one two three four and five here and then an a b c so a larger a larger pattern across this area here so it's not quite there just yet but we just need to be mindful um of of that as well so um looks so, so, i'm pretty sure that's going to sort of head back up through there 
Uh, so, I mean, that could be down for one here, back for two, down for one and back for two. Um, so we'll know very, very shortly if that's going to be the case. We'll be able to rule that out if we get support on top of 353. If that's the case, then we can move in long on the material sector, and that means buying pretty much on the low of uh, of the current market for, for, uh, for um, you know, the material sector uh, but uh, but even so this this move still up here would just be a larger a larger rally uh, coming back up to the fourth wave of one lesser degree which would be up here but it does it does give us you know it does give us a bit of time and that would be in line with the s p 500 um, because the um, the Australian dollar has been uh, in line with the uh, metals market as well um, so we can see that that's going to <laughs> rally higher as well um, so uh, that was probably be in line with that as well so it could be an opportunity to buy on the bottom but um, let's just scale in and keep it light and we'll work out which ones are the best ones when we come to the robo section uh, we've been trying to pile in on the long side on the robo side all all week and um, even last even last week um, we just had that um, that sharp spike on the Monday because of the US Congress there but which is a shame really otherwise we would have had a you know a lot of long positions in the market for for this move but we've done sort of okay I guess you know you've got to take the rough with the smooth um, the the oil market while we're here, uh, oil follows stock. So we were looking at um, you know a series of waves of four. You know when you get to large numbers, you've got to expect a bounce, and that's what we're seeing at the moment. And um, and now that it's got a retested support on ninety, that's going to be pushing higher as as well here. Um, but we still see it as a um, as a corrective bounce so um yes but it will follow stock as well so it, it may it may rise to a reasonable degree so anyway stops under 90 for longs and uh and if 91 becomes support then you can add on that as well so the gold market as well uh the gold and the euro have had the same same pattern actually so this this pattern here in the uh, that we've got for gold here is the same for the same for the euro. So um, look anyway, what we're looking for here is we're looking for an A wave. We've got our B wave in three waves, and we've got our C wave up through here. So that's done and dusted. We've got this um, this uh, move down through here. So we're looking at this being wave one, wave two will either be you know um, it it uh, wave two will either be uh, you know, wave two in the textbook is always sixty one point eight percent, but that's never the case. You know, it could be it can be anywhere between sort of, you know, forty percent and eighty percent really. So, but what it really means is that um, if a market, there's normally when you get wave one coming down through here, or or any wave coming down, there's normally uh, two two areas that are important: this consolidation area here of wave three and four, and also the consolidation area of of one and two in here, because there'll be five waves in here. So this consolidation of volume in here and this one in through here, they're the two blocks that you need to work with. So a market can just come to 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 here and fail from that point and move down. Or it, if it's going to be stronger, then it's going to it's going to retest that supply area up through here. So they're always a little bit sort of unknown. Um, normally, we can get a bit of sentiment from other markets and so forth. Um, so let's just um, allow this to play out. But what we will know is that this move through here will be in three waves. Those three waves there, there will be inside of this one here. There will be five waves three waves and five waves a five three five structure as an abc rally for wave two once that's completed then we should see this move to the downside further of course the um the 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 safer trade is having the 15 having the 72 as a retested resistance um, but if you if you're uh, diligent enough, you may be able to get it from up here as well. Um, so, uh, up at, uh, either from well, if it's going just going to come to here, then catch it under here. If it's going to come up through here, then you want a very clean uh, three wave structure here, and then we want it locking under the fifteen. Uh, 80 and then also under the next number here the see within group two there's actually a lot of things actually going on in here it's just not these three levels here 
uh, all the all the even numbers and whole numbers. So uh, we got five here. The next number would be eight. We got seventy. Uh, we got seventy-five. Uh, we got seventy-eight. They're the main other numbers within this group two here, and they're the ones that. Uh, that's why I call it a zone sometimes, um, because there's a lot more numbers in there. And this will also be with stock as well. When you're seeing a stock maybe at a dollar sixty-five, dollar seventy-two, a dollar eighty, there's a whole lot of other levels in there. If you look closely, and you'll see the market and all the orders building around those. There's a there's a lot there's a lot in Group Two. Um, yeah. Look. Anyway, that's all good. Silver's the same as well. And let's have a look at FX. Just this is the uh, U.S. dollar here, and uh, I just want to focus on this for for a second because this is obviously very pivotal to um, to commodities and uh, also the euro as well. Uh, and so um, the the, uh, the the move that we've had uh, down through here down to eighty two is in is in three waves. So we could view that as 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 a corrective uh, pattern through here. Um, this move up through here is in a nice. Um, a, B, and C through here. So if this if this price here, the market takes out this low through th this this low right here at the 82 here, then then it confirms that it is a corrective pattern as such, and then we'll be making further lows through here. So further lows through here is going to see the euro push higher as well, um, but it also can affect um, the copper market moving higher as well, and also perhaps even the gold market as well. So. Um, this is this is quite critical because it will change some of the wave counts that we've been looking at. Um, it's a, probably a little bit sort of uh, uh, early. I normally do this report a little bit sort of later, but um, I just got up a bit early to, uh, to to catch the moves in the U.S. in the in the New York session. So, um, look if if this um, if the price if the price moves uh, stays above this low here and moves back up through through here then the count on the euro will be correct and the count on the gold will be correct however if this moves down below this low here and through the 82 here then we are looking at uh, larger corrective rallies in uh, in in copper and also in uh, the euro as well. So be very mindful of that. Um, so just allow this to sort of play out through here and um, it will take a little sort of session or two to um, to, to, to unfold. So um, we might be better off. Let's just have a look at the euro now. Yeah, so the same thing with the euro as well. We would have um, have this as count down here as, as the same as gold here, this pattern, the A, the B, and the C here. Um, and we would be counting this as down for one and back for two, then down for one and back for two, you know, into here and then down from here. But this, you know, if this, this uh, moves like above here, then it's got the bias of a three-wave corrective pattern, a bullish corrective pattern, and we'll see new highs through here. So just be... Just be a little bit diligent about this um, because wave fours move, tend to move sideways and they can be complex and not as easy as wave twos. Um, so they can just they can just grow in size. So just be um, a bit careful about that there. And if it does push up here, then count five waves up through here. The other flip side to this is that um, let me just check here. No, that should be right. So we'll just be looking for a larger correction. This little A, B, and C here would become the A wave. This would become the B wave, and we'll be looking for a C wave a bit higher up through here. So, <clears throat> yeah, just be careful about that. The which you know, if that's the case, it makes the it gives strength to the Australian dollar as well. So, with the Australian dollar here, we're considering this being the low through here. Very tricky wave count through here. I know that we've changed it and sort of played with it a little bit, um, but um, we now need to see that as a low here uh, rather than the, than the than the one dollar at this stage. Um, but we'd be looking for this as an A and a B and a C wave. Sorry, that should be a C wave there. An A and a B and a C wave through here. Um, if we have a look at this on a smaller chart here, uh, this morning I mentioned it's already moved now a bit, uh, sorry about that, but um, you know, this is a typical situation at, at, at group one here because with group one, the 10, 20 and 30, there's always a, you know, when it moves up, there's always some type of corrective pattern across here, but when it, even, even here when it moves 
goes up through here and it comes back and checks on it. You can see that it's support here and then it starts to move up here. That's the perfect time to catch that. And then there'll be a little corrective pattern across here as well for the uh, midpoint and then pushing up through here. Now we'll be coming back up to the 102.72. So you know that 272 and 772 are stronger than the normal 72. So it'll play out here, but it should push higher through that as well because from here, we can see that this is a little uh, impulse wave up for wave one, back for wave two. So this would be the third wave going up through here. Then there'll be a fourth and then there'll be a fifth wave up through here. So this little move up through here will also have five waves in it. The one, the two, and then this is the third wave coming in here. But this third wave's also got one, two, three, four, and five in here. So there's still more to go. So this will be playing to the upside. So you can use the midpoint rather than the top of group one, the time, the time that you get up and get around to this. Um, and then the and the group two uh, through here as well. So um, we'd be looking at uh, further upside through here. So the 103 would be about right. So the one, the two, the third wave into here, the fourth wave across here, and the fifth wave through up to here. So that would be the trade on that side of it. Um, all right, well, um, I think that's it. Um, yeah, so all righty, well, that's it. Good morning and uh, good luck.